a drug that can give your dog up to three more years of life? Sounds amazing, right? Well, before you go running to the pharmacy, let's have a conversation next. Let's get this week's podcast going. Hey, everybody, this is Jake from On Dog Training Academy. We're an online dog training company. We offer courses, virtual private lessons. If you need help, we're here to help you guys. Uh, on this week's podcast, I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants on this one because I had another episode that I wanted to kind of talk about and do a podcast on, and this popped up. Now, it's it's about a little less than a year old or a little more than a year old here, Um but it's very intriguing, and it got me thinking. So I read the article. I digged around a little bit more online to find out this is legit. This is definitely something they're working on. And um, I couldn't find any updates that are very, very current. This article is goes back to March of 22. So I guess about a year, a year and a half, about a year and a half ago or so. And um, I just thought, well, you know what? This would be something really cool to talk about because on the surface – when you read this, you're like, well, hell yeah, 100%. But we also need to talk about and consider the ramifications of this um, and and things maybe we're not thinking about because obviously we're thinking about, oh my God, I get more time with my dog. So if you're not aware of it, um, there is a bunch of articles out here. The one that I am referencing is from Daily Pause. Uh, it is... Uh, basically, the article is, is headlined, could this drug help our dogs live longer? Researchers are testing... Rap see, I'm gonna botch the name of this. Uh rapamycin, I'm assuming it's called. Uh rapamycin to find out. So they're they're testing this rapamycin uh drug to see what it can do and if it uh is gonna help our dogs. And they've been doing this. It sounds like they have a big study out, or they had a big study out, and I'm guessing because they're saying it can extend dogs' lives for you know three years, up to three years or longer. Um it's going to take some time. So if this was published out in 2022, I'm guessing this if this drug was to become legit, it probably won't be out for at least another three to five years. That being said, they've done nationwide studies involving almost 600 dogs testing the life uh, extending potential of the drug rapamycin. And, um, and I'm going to botch that name. I just know it. It's such a not... All medications, you notice how all medications just don't roll off the tongue. That's why they put like these like generic names to them and stuff because rapamycin, yeah, it's getting easier for me to say, but it's still a struggle. Um, but usually, um, usually humans are taking rapamycin. Um, it's administered by the, or it's, it's uh, authorized by the FDA for humans to undergo organ transplants. The drug suppresses the immune system to prevent it from attacking donated organs. Um, but, and here's the interesting thing, rapamycin, also known as, and this doesn't make it any better, it's also known as, oh my god, cyrolimus, cyrolimus, may also help slow, I'm just going to call it rapamycin, apparently that one's easier, may also help slow down canine aging process, potentially adding years to your dog's life. Okay, so the the big thing um, in this study and we'll kind of, well, I'll just kind of go over this. You guys can check out these articles and stuff as well. Um, but the really interesting thing is they've been doing these tests in mice, and rapamycin seems to reverse aging related functional decline in heart, brain, ovaries, and oral cavities. And um, it also appears to boost the immune system's ability to detect cancers and fight off viruses like the flu and COVID 19. So, and obviously those things aren't as, um, uh, uh, important to like the flu and COVID-19 th I don't think are, are relevant really to, to dogs that much but you look at it and it's 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 uh, it reverse age related functional declines in the heart brain ovaries and oral cavities well man that is a massive thing if you think about if you've ever had dogs that have aged and, and passed away why did they pass away you know um, you know that's that to me is a very uh a lot of times it's something to do with heart, brain. If your dog's intact, it can certainly affect that. Um, arthritis, different things. It does seem to um, boost immune systems. 
it kind of resets the immune system function by reducing and increasing by reducing the increase in chronic inflammation that goes along with aging. Hell, do they can I just buy this over the counter? I would love this medication, not even because I want to live longer, but man, less inflammation sounds sounds amazing. You know, and so so again, you guys can kind of do your studies on this and I'm I'm it, I don't want to say I'm excited because any any way I can get more time with my dog, um, and hopefully cats too. If you're a cat person, like we have a cat who's 19, and um, well, he's 19 in three days, and yeah, if we can get three more years for him, sure. I, I mean, yeah, selfishly, I'm gonna say yeah, I would take that. Same with my dog. So he's seven right now. If you're telling me he would live to be 13, but I could get him up to 16, and his quality of life is is really well, would I do it? Yes, of course. You know. He's basically our child, like we're extremely attached to him. Losing him is going to be devastating. And that's, I'm sure when you're listening to this, you're like, that's us too. Like, yeah, of course, 100%. We would, we would uh, jump all over it. We'd go get the medication and give it to our dogs. Our dogs live longer. Everything is awesome. And again, selfishly and on the surface, that sounds like the right answer. Here's the problem I have. And we can take this for what it's worth. There's been, although population decline for humans, and and trust me, I'm no expert at this, so if I'm wrong, definitely, you know, let me know, but population decline is something that definitely is uh, sort of happening, but overall for humans, overall, we're living longer, which means we're having, obviously, more people in, in nursing homes living longer in their retirements, so they're not, and this sounds terrible, they're not when it comes to taxes and money, they're less productive citizens. And it just overpopulates. The de- Certain demographics overpopulate. And so it's not really f- fixing anything. Yes, you get to live longer, which is amazing. But is it fixing anything? Is it helping anything um, as a society? And I look at the sort of the same thing. And again, I'm not saying we should be dying young. No, this is this is going to get way more controversial than I want it to be if, if I start talking about that stuff. No way. No way. Um, but what I'm looking at is is we already have a pretty full um, stray dog humane society issue, right? Where humane societies just can't, aside from the COVID-19 years, humane societies just can't get dogs out the door fast enough um, because there's just so many of them. We're overpopulated with dogs. We're overpopulated with cats. So extending lives, again, for our pet dogs, for us selfishly, absolutely, you know, and even to this day right now, if someone said, well, would you give your dog this pill? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I would do it. But I, there's always the back of my mind thinking, well, okay, so if I get three more years with my dog, that means that's <clears throat> three more years that I won't be getting a different dog or, or something like that. Um, and now that means more dogs sitting in shelters, less dogs getting adopted because they're living longer. So people are less inclined to go get a dog. And what's that going to do for our shelter population, for our rescue dog population? What's that going to do? Is that going to harm in the long run? Are more young quality dogs going to get euthanized because they can't find homes because our dogs are living longer? So we just don't have that need, um, you know, or, or I mean, I could say, well, people just need to get more dogs, but that's not the answer. You know, oh, yeah, just adopt more dogs. That's it's not necessarily the answer. It's It's not going to. I think it just will like continue to become a problem. So, you know, as much as I really like this and would really like to um, see this come out, uh, it it just there's there's a lot of questions to it. Um, I'll be interested, and I'm definitely going to put this into an archive here and 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 follow along and check and see if there's any new updates to to this study to see, you know, first off, we got to look at quality of life. Now, obviously anti, if it's reversing inflammation stuff, or if it's reducing inflammation and it's, it's keeping your health, uh, your heart healthy, things like that. Awesome. What are side effects to it though? Like I'm always weighing out quality versus quantity. So is that an additional three years of my dog's life going to be kind of blah where the dog's not going to be very well? Or, I mean, it sounds like this is what it would be is, are they going to be relatively healthy and happy for that additional three-ish years that to me is a big question and um 
obviously I'd like to see when these tests come out down the road, I'd like to see what, what the studies show with those 600 dogs that they tested. Um, cause if quality of life is there in the end, my, my goal as a dog owner is to give my dog the absolute best life they possibly can. And that means keeping them healthy. It means doing the right things when it comes to vetting and unfortunately doing the right thing when it comes to end of life. So I always, I always look at the big picture. So yeah, I'd, I'd give my dog this drug hundred percent, 10 out of 10 times, but let's just also keep in mind what this could possibly do for the, uh, the already overfilled uh, rescues and things like that, where dogs are are just not being able to find quality homes because there's just too many of them. What's that going to do to that population when our dogs, because they may not be getting these meds, but our dogs will be getting these meds living longer. We don't have a need to go get a rescue dog because we still have our dog. Just little things to think about. Um, again, I'm actually pretty excited for this drug. I think this could this could be something that could be really awesome. Now, let's be honest though. Like we get three more years. Yay. We'll want three more and then three more and then three more, right? Like we're never going to be satisfied, but the thought of being able to have my dog for another three years. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. You know, the end is inevitable and we always have to realize that, but if we can extend it quality wise, I'm all for it. So what I want you guys to do I typically don't ask this. um, I don't ask this much in my podcast, but first thing I want you guys to do is, is comment on this. Okay. Whether you're listening to this on YouTube or you're listening to this on one of the podcast platforms, if you're able to, if you're not able to comment on the platforms, jump over to YouTube, you can leave comments there. No problem. But what, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Like, would you do it? Are you worried about the ramifications of dogs living longer? You know, how do you feel about this study? And I will put, just so you guys can have it, I will put a link to this article. Um, again, it's on Daily Pause. It's a place I like to go to and just check out and see what little news things have dropped here and there. And Because it gives you some, like, science stuff. It gives you behavioral stuff. It's kind of a cool little site. But, so Daily Pause, I like to check out. Um, but what do you guys think about this? You know, leave comments and, and let me know. Is this something you would be in support of? Are you worried about it? Are you concerned like I am? You know, how do you feel? The other thing, guys, is if you're enjoying these podcasts, definitely uh, give me a review. Uh, uh, give me a stars, whatever, on whatever podcast platform you're using. If you're listening to this on YouTube, thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. If you're listening to this on podcasts, uh, rate, our, rate our podcast because the more high rates we get, the more visibility we get. And as you guys know, we're always wanting to reach more people. You know, it's not about making money, it's about education. And so we just want to reach as many people as we can. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we are able to continue doing that. If you have any questions, you guys can definitely check out ondogtrainingacademy.com. You can shoot us a message on there. We're on all the socials, well, except for TikTok. We may be on TikTok, but it's not very active. I'm not TikTok-y. Um, but we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, everything. So check us out, ondogtrainingacademy.com. And hopefully, guys, this was super interesting at the very least. Uh, Hopefully it was slightly educational. Hopefully you learned something. And I mean, I know I did. I learned that there's a drug that could possibly extend our dog's lives out for three years, which is pretty cool. Um, But let me know what you guys think about this article. Let me know what you guys would do if this was an option. Um, And of course, guys, like always, we'll see you next week. Good dog.